Hi, uh, welcome. <laughs> Today in this video, we're going to look at flow field following and processing. What is flow field following? Well, it is one of Reynolds' steering behaviors. If, you've, if you're watching videos before or after, that's where we are, a whole lot of videos about steering behaviors. And here we have from Reynolds' website, this is the example of flow field following. And what we see is we have a two-dimensional grid of vectors. So everywhere in this space behind me, there's a vector pointing in a given direction. And remember, the central question we're asking with every steering behavior example is, what is the vehicle's desired velocity? In this case, this vehicle moving around this space, it, it's moving around and looks below it, and it's, there's like an arrow painted on the ground, and that arrow represents its desired velocity. Now Reynolds actually does something a little bit different than what I, what I do in my example, where the vehicle actually looks ahead. It looks in the direction it's moving and looks ahead and looks at the, the arrow on the ground in front of it. But it's for simplicity's sake, we're just going to look at the arrow below us. It's a, it's a small detail there, but one to consider. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. How do we implement this in processing and what kinds of applications and exciting results can we get from doing that? So let's sort of move over here for a second and, and think about what it is we're doing. So, <coughs> so cold. So we have a processing window. And what we're going to say is, if we could say every single pixel in this window represents a vector. But we're not going to do that. That's too many vectors. Uh, too many vectors, Mozart. Too many vectors. So what we're going to do instead is go, we're going to subdivide the, the window. So here you could see, you know, you could imagine if this were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like 800 by 1, 2, 3, 4 by, if this window was 800 by 400, every single one of these cells is 10 by 10 pixels. So you're going to see in the example, we're going to have a variable, I think I called it resolution, and I don't remember if I made it a float or an int, but that tells us how much to scale down. For every 10 pixels in the window, there's a particular arrow going in a certain direction. And we could start by saying, hey, everywhere on this screen, Everywhere in this space, there's just an arrow pointing to the right, or there's an arrow pointing in a random direction, or there's an arrow pointing according to Perlin noise or some other algorithm. And, and what, you, what you're going to see is we're going to use Perlin noise and a few different things, but this is a nice, if you're looking for creating some type of fluid system, meandering path of a river, or if you simply want to examine the contours of an image and have things flow around those contours, this could be a model that you could use. And we're going to see that as we get to the actual example. So what do we need? We know we have a vehicle, and the vehicle is able to calculate a uh, steering force according to desired velocity. Now we're going to need a class called, and I, in my example I called it flow field. And the flow field, oh, this is just a plug here that I'm bumping into. Hi. <laughs> the flow field as a class is, stores all the data for this representation right here. What do we need? Well, what does this look like to you? It looks to me like a two-dimensional array. Now, you, you might be saying to yourself, oy vey, I don't know what a two-dimensional array is. If so, stay tuned. I will link below to a tutorial about 2D arrays and as well uh, perhaps another video somewhere that I've made when I make it or if I already made it, I don't recall. <laughs> but um, what is a two-dimensional array? Just to sort of briefly get us up to speed here, right? a one-dimensional array we're quite familiar with. We could say, hey, p vector, bracket, bracket, um, vectors, this is a one-dimensional array and every element in that array has an index. This is vector 0, vector 1, vector 2, vector 3, vector 4, vector 5. That's a one-dimensional array. A two-dimensional array allows us just to think, ah, instead of this linear list of data, of items, of vectors, let's have a matrix of them. And instead of each one having a singular index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we could say, hey, this vector here is vector 3, comma 1. Index, instead of index simply 3, it's index 3, comma 1. It's a two-dimensional grid of information. In truth, you know, underneath the hood in the computer, it's really just, everything's just linear information, but this is how we get to think of it, and this is how we get to write our code. I don't know, going off on tangents. Okay, so what does that look like? You're going to see that we are going to make a two-dimensional array of vectors. So this is the core piece of data that's going to be in the flow field class. It's a two-dimensional array of vectors. A two-dimensional array of vectors and Every, as soon as a vehicle is here, right, the vehicle has 
an XY location, which is in pixels. And we need to know which arrow should it look up. In this case, we can see it's 4, 2. But maybe its location, did I say 10? I meant 100. <laughs> Wow, there's got to be some way of like going back and like dubbing my voiceover. And it's April Fool's today, so that was my April Fool's joke to get that wrong. Um, if it's 800 pixels and we only have eight spots, that would be 100 pixels each. Anyway, so what are probably we're not going to make them that big. I've kind of gone off the deep end here, but um, if we know the object's location is at x, y, we simply need to divide by that resolution. Resolution. If it happens to be at 430 pixels, comma, 203 pixels. If we divide each of those by 100, what do we get? 4, comma, 2. That's the values we need to look up in our two-dimensional array. And then that vector we pull out of the two-dimensional array becomes the desired velocity. Then we calculate steering, and boom, we're done. OK? So this is kind of the math. This is the framework. Of course, the really interesting stuff is the question of how do you calculate your flow field? I'm going to give you a few little examples of how to do that and ultimately a, a couple exercises for how you could extend that further. But really, this is the case where we have an example that you can use verbatim and just look for the place where the flow field is being calculated and adjust that. OK, so let's take a look um, at the example. So, uh, so this is Reynolds, and now we're going to switch to uh, processing, and here we've got it. So look at this. This is exactly what I was talking about. We have a flow field class, which has a two-dimensional array of vectors. It has columns and rows to keep track of how many columns and how many rows in that grid. And it also has a resolution. That resolution variable tells us what is the relationship between the number of columns and rows to the width and height of the window. And we can see that right down here. The number of columns is width divided by resolution. The number of rows is height divided by resolution. Brilliant, perfect, hooray. OK, so when we run this example, what do we actually see? So what we're seeing here, and I guess it's a little bit light, but I don't know how the quality of these videos is. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see I have on the window, I've, I've drawn a line to represent the vector in each one of those spots. And if I click the mouse here, I'm adding a vehicle. And you can see now this vehicle is following those lines. So there's two things we need to look at. One is, how are all those lines calculated? And then how does the vehicle look up those line by lines, I mean vectors. How are all those vectors calculated? And how does the vehicle look up um, it, it, the vector for its desired velocity? So let's take a look at both of those things in the code. The first one we said is, how do we calculate all of those um, vectors? Well, let me just do something here. I'm going to change this to 0. So what I'm actually doing is I'm making up an angle, and every single vector is made from that angle, p vector dot from angle theta. So what if every angle is 0? Look what we have. We have a whole lot of lines just pointing all to the right. What if every angle was pi divided by 4? We have a whole bunch of lines all pointing 45 degrees below. What if every line was a random angle between negative pi divided by 4 and pi divided by 4? Let's run this again. We have a whole lot of random angles mostly pointing to the right. So you can see here we're starting to get something. Even just with this simple flow field, like click something, we almost have like this illusion of this intelligent behavior when these vehicles are moving according to some, they're like in water or they're flocking. There's, it's, it's kind of almost close to there. Um, so you can see how just by picking angles, and you can think of what if I use sine or cosine or try to get them all in a spiral pattern. Well, how could you calculate those angles? A nice way of doing it is just to use Perlin noise. And when we see we've got Perlin noise here, and I'll put a whole bunch of vehicles in, we see that we've got this nice kind of smooth path. So what's going on with Perlin noise? Remember, Perlin noise is random, but every value is similar to, the, to values around it. And here we have Perlin noise in a two-dimensional space. Every angle is similar to the angle above, below, to the left, the right, and diagonally, but it's different. So we have this really nice behavior where we have this kind of smooth randomness and almost has this quality of a, of a flow of water, of lava, of a river. There's, there's lots of things you could do with this. So, um, so, so he, oh, oh I, I forgot the last thing. So I just wanted to briefly point out in the code then where is the vehicle looking up its desired velocity? That was the second thing we wanted to say. And there is a function called follow. And ah, it calls a function called lookup. So the flow field has in it a function called lookup that can receive a location on the screen and pass back the vector at that location. And when we go to look at that function lookup, 
Here it is. It's very simple. We're saying, hey, divide by resolution, divide by resolution. Hey, constrain to make sure we're not off the screen. We don't want to be off the array and return that vector. So this is really what we're doing here. We're making a bunch of vectors um, in a two-dimensional array. All the vehicles are there in the space. They look up the vectors below themselves. Those become the desired velocity. Steering equals desired minus current velocity. And apply that steering force and we've got flow field following. Now, what are some things you might do here? So an exercise to yourself, you might think, hmm, these are all well and good, but what would happen if the flow field animated over time? What if it actually changed? It wasn't the same. And one way that we can do that, and I'm going to um, not show you the code, but you can make this an exercise for yourself, is what if you used three-dimensional Perlin noise? So instead of Right? Two-dimensional Perlin noise, we're seeing a slice of time of all the Perlin noise values. Now we're seeing the third dimension as time over frames of animation. So look at this. We almost get this like strange hair-like um, behavior. I mean, if we drew this in a different way, we have an interesting simulation just on our own. But using this as flow field following, once we drop the vehicles in here, you can see, and if I take that away, look, we're going to spend a lot of time trying to get a nice flocking behavior where the vehicles actually look at their neighbors and move away and fuck a line and all that stuff. We almost have that here just with simple a pearl and noise flow field. And whoa, take this into three dimensions and have the stuff fly around in three dimensions and you've really got something there too. So that's something to think of. The other thing that might occur to you is, okay, we've got this two-dimensional grid, right? What other, what stuff that we program with all the time is a two-dimensional grid? Pixels. Let's think about this for a second. Uh, I have an eraser. I've got to find it. There it is. So let's think about something. We have a flow field, right, which is a two-dimensional grid of vectors. What if I have an image? like a silhouette of a person. This is like a strange, weird, nonsensical alien ghost. Okay, a silhouette of a strange alien that came from outer space. What if I could make a flow field where the vectors all followed the contours of that image or all pointed towards the image or out from the image? Could I analyze the pixels of an image? What if I looked at every pixel and looked at its neighbors and had the vector always point from to the brightest pixel, in the, or the pixel most similar, or pixel most different, or um, you know, so doing edge detection or some image processing algorithms. Can you translate? Can you map a pixel color to the angle of a vector, or a pixel's relationship to its neighbors to the angle of a vector? So I don't actually have a solution to this exercise currently in the GitHub repository, although at some point in the future when this video is remade or changed or you're watching it, maybe there will be one. But this, I think, is a great exercise. Can you think of a creative way of defining a flow field? Three-dimensional Perlin noise from an image, from depth data, from a connect sensor, from some other, um, from some other piece of data. Uh, you, know, from, you can imagine creating a, 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 a kind of pliable surface that you're measuring its topology with, with a connect and then turning that into a flow field so you project on it and stuff flows around it. I'm just kind of going crazy with maybe obvious ideas. I don't know. But so um, hopefully this helps you understand what a flow field is, how flow field works, and gives you some ideas for projects you might make from it. And I look forward to you sharing some of those with, I don't know, people. <laughs> okay, I think I was recording. I was, and the audio seems to be working. So hopefully you'll be watching this later. Bye.